Welcome to Mind Pump. I'm back, everybody. Hey, hey, you sound great. Back in the studio. Mind Pump is the top fitness and health podcast in the world. And this is a Q&A episode. We call it Qua. It's where we answer fitness and health questions yeah. asked by listeners like you. Now, the way we open the episode is by talking about current events. Oftentimes, we mention our sponsors. We have a lot of fun, generally. We're not going to talk about Corona at all. So let me give you the breakdown of this episode. So the intro was about 38 minutes long, and we start out by talking about Justin's life-changing freeway fright event that he forgot to tell everybody about, apparently. Dun, dun, dun. It's like a crazy, crazy story that he just, I don't know, didn't want to tell anybody for some reason. I forgot about it. <laughs> and we had to remind him. Uh, then we talked about this effects of stress. Everybody's under a lot of weird stress right now. And one of the effects is overeating, eating a lot of snacks, chips, and cookies, and all kinds of bad stuff. Well, look, here's the deal. Uh, it's probably too much to ask yourself to just not snack while you're stuck at home. So here's the second best option. Make good snack choices. Now, one of our favorite snacks are meat sticks from Paleo Valley. These are grass-fed meat sausages that you unwrap, that you eat them right there. High protein, uh, no sugar, no carbohydrates, low calorie. They're Delicioso. Easily the most delicious kind of jerky sticks you'll ever find. And of course, they're very, very healthy. And because you listen to Mind Pump, we have a discount for you. Just go to Paleo Valley. That's P-A-L-E-O valley.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump 15, the number 15 without a space. You'll get 15% off your first order. Of course, it mails it directly to your door, so you don't have to go out into the scary world right now. Then we talked about mm -hmm. the website neighbor.com. It's going to be, it's pretty revolutionary, kind of cool. We talked about drive-by family visits. Uh, I think more people are going to start doing this. I talked about the Chinese wet markets, how they're reopened. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Mm. We gave some coronavirus updates. Uh, we Justin told, told us some facts yeah. about honey. Facts um, for your snacks. Kind of cool. And then I talked about the high school wrestler who slammed the kidnapper. Took him down. I loved it. Get him. Then we got into answering the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know, uh, what are the must-dos to maintain your physique during a quarantine? So we talk about the things you should be doing to help manage your body right now while you're stuck at home. The next question, this person wants to know, uh, what's the one thing that each of us does on a daily basis as far as general maintenance is concerned or something that we do every day to improve ourselves? So we talk about our own strategies. Next question, this person says, look, uh, what have you been doing to stay mentally fit during the lockdown? It's a great question. Uh, a lot of us are talking about how to work out and all that stuff, but mentally and psychologically, this can be a difficult time. So we talk about some strategies to help with that. And then the final question, I guess there's a lot of people complaining about one of the largest fitness companies in the world, 24 Hour Fitness, not freezing people's membership. So we give our opinion yeah. on that. Come on, guys. That. Also, this right now, actually, uh, the final hours, these are the final hours for our MAPS Powerlift 50% off sale. So MAPS Powerlift is a powerlifting workout program. Now, you might be stuck at home, so you're thinking, can I follow this routine? If you have a basic gym setup, a barbell, a squat rack, dumbbells, adjustable bench, you can pretty much follow the entire program. So while you're stuck at home, if you've got some of that equipment, why not see if you can get the best PRs of your life in your bench press, squat, and deadlift? And again, remember, it's 50% off right now. These are the final hours. By the way, this program will not be going on sale again for the rest of the year. So if you want to get this program, now is the time. Uh, anyway, here's how you get that discount. Go to mapspowerlift.com. That's M-A-P-S-P-O-W-E-R-L-I-F-T.com and use the code POWER50. That's P-O-W-E-R-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, dog. You know it's my favorite time of the week. It's good to be back home in our yeah. studio. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. All right. So we had Powerful. three winners for iTunes and we have three winners for Facebook. The iTunes winners are Really Me, Mom of Two, Paul Griffin, 33, Sir Pump a Lot. Yeah. And for Facebook, we have Andrew J. Coombs, Aaron Kuhn, and Kylie Lunsford. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you.
<laughs> you want to know what the nicest part about this is? Looking uh, at your face. Just seeing you guys. And then, uh, you know, I've been doing podcasts from my phone, which means I can't hear my voice in my ears. Dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, the, that's horrible. The so best just, part of this is yeah. the narcissism, right? Uh, <laughs> we got you out of the house too, dude. You gotta, you know, that's something big. Yeah, no, it's time. It was time, man. I, I was self quarantined for a little longer than two weeks, so I'm good. When yeah. are we gonna find out you had COVID? Uh, I got to do an antibody test if they ever have them. Yeah, mm. you know? they're, they're working on that, aren't they? They are, and you know, how, okay, they need samples. I will be. Mm. How's that work? So mad if I didn't have COVID, <laughs> you'd be mad. What a waste. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I was sick for no reason? I'm convinced you are. You don't get sick that often and you don't get sick that bad. Yeah. yeah. You were, I mean, you were bad. You're yeah. trashed. What if it was a, What if it was all psychological? What if I just had a cold because I, because I freak out so much? <laughs> this too would not surprise me. You know I, what I mean? I'm like, I, oh my God, I'm dying. Yeah. Oh, I, I totally, it's COVID. It's getting me hard. I agree with Justin on this one. Yeah. Uh, I agree. No, if I, if I didn't have it, I will be so, so, so angry. Now, if I do have the antibodies, I'm going to feel... Invincible, like, like a superhero, right? Oh you know, I'm gonna walk around just fucking. Licking. People are gonna want your blood. She's gonna lick things and stuff. I get the flu. Hey, yeah. you know what I? <laughs> oh shit, I forgot. Oh, no. You know what I totally forgot about? Justin didn't even. This, Justin needs to be slapped sometimes. Wow, really? His, yeah. Not only are you, my wife says the same thing. Not only are you a bad storyteller, you're bad when you have incredible stories to tell <laughs> and you forget. Oh, you fucking got in an. Okay, so on the way home, I don't oh, know. Right. Anything, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. anything yet. Okay, yeah. so I don't know anything about this story. He I just, just know. He just forget. I know. I just know that too much shit. I get a phone call. We're driving. We're driving on. Uh, we're we're at Sacramento area. I forget what freeway that is. Right, fifty eight, or 80? 80, 80, 80. Yeah. We're on eighty, and there's an option where you can go, uh, like towards San Francisco, or we can go kind of towards the valley, which is five. And we normally always go towards San Francisco. It's like five minutes difference. There's an actual like <clears throat> fork where you can make the decision. And all of a sudden, we see like traffic coming to a halt. And yeah. mind you, this is doing... There's during, not a lot of cars. There's anymore. no cars. Yeah. So how is there traffic? And so I, I tell her, oh shit, there's probably an accident. And uh, like we get stopped right before the, the, the where it was. And she gets a phone call from Courtney that, and Courtney's like, oh my God, you guys, there's a huge accident. Uh, Justin saved lives, like all this crazy what? shit. Yes, bro. No, what? I didn't save no lives, but I He's was so, there. I was part of it. He's it was so crazy. humble. He's so humble. Because no, you know if I it was know. Adam or I, we would So she said it. something. It was, all, it was all Courtney. A car rolled in front, right in front of you? Yeah, so we were driving, and uh, all of a sudden... I saw I saw people kind of moving to the left or to the right, like trying to avoid like what was happening in front. And then I caught the tail end of of this car that was up in the air, flipping in the air, like it was out of like a Hollywood movie, dude. It Whoa. was like so. Basically, what happened? This is kind of crazy because like there was characters involved. So there was this guy that was uh, he was driving a big rig, and uh, he was the most animated and the most pissed about the whole thing. Uh, Cause he saw everything. He saw what happened, what transpired. There was like a Kia uh, car that uh, was apparently stopping in in the freeway, and everybody was going eighty at least. This is like you know a stretch of straight highway that everybody just jams, you know. And yeah, so, and, and hardly any cars on the road. I would imagine everyone's flying. Everybody's flying, and and so I guess he had stopped five times, and like this big rig had seen this car doing that, and was like making his way around him. And uh, <clears throat> I guess, so this lady that was in a, a Tahoe with a, a little girl, which was, you know, this was, this is where it got all real for us, uh, was in the back seat, like a three-year-old uh, daughter. And I guess she had apparently, and this is, I don't know if I can confirm this or not, but like somebody else that had saw everything go down that went past it said that she was probably looking down on her phone. Um, drove and didn't see and then just slammed into the back uh, and he was almost at a dead stop. So from 80 miles oh, an hour no. to a dead stop, this car was like compacted in half, like half of the car was gone. And then this, uh, th this Tahoe basically hit at impact and then just jolted and flipped it up in the air and, and tumbled and tumbled and tumbled and then finally like came to a stop. And Please tell me the little girl's all right. She's okay. okay. Yeah, everybody all actually right. survived, as far as I know. I don't know about the guy that was in the uh, Kia, and plus we think he might have been on drugs, something, or had like a suicidal uh, issue. Like he was trying to do this to end himself, something, like something crazy, because who does that, right? And so we stopped. There's just like, there's just debris and shit, like 
all over the freeway. Like it, this this car like rolled so many times. Like everything out of the car just like blew out of the car. Um, and we so we stopped and and, and Courtney kind of went over to assess. And I was like looking at the guy to see if he was okay. He was like done. Like he was just <coughs> just passed out. Like in in the front seat. Um, and was just like not even moving. And so a guy beat me to him and got in there and like had to end up like cutting cutting him out from his uh, seatbelt. And right as he did that, he kind of woke up. Okay, good. And but he was on the other side of the freeway with the car. So he was all basically all the way to the right. And then the guy kind of was trying to revive him. He wakes up, he slams his foot on the gas and like drives directly across what? all four lanes. Because he was probably just out of just it. Just so out hazard. of yeah. it, dude. And, and his car started to like catch on fire. And so then he slams on the other side. The car catches on fire. I'm like, oh my God. Like I'm on the other side. Like now we're, I'm with Courtney. We're looking to see like how the, the mom and the little daughter are doing. And she's thankfully, she had like blood all over her arm, but she was fine. She just had like really bad cuts from, from the accident. And the little girl didn't really have any like signs of, uh, uh, you know, any kind of cuts or anything, just like a little bruise and stuff. So on her she face. was okay. She was awake, super scared. And so we were, we were trying to like hold the girl to calm her down. Uh, for the mom and uh and so basically on the other side the guy has to pull him out gets him on the ground the guy's laying there the car just bursts into flames and then like after that you know we heard a couple like pops but it's like the tires i guess are the ones that like pop up from from mm -hmm. when, it, when it gets too hot from the fire and so they just let the car just burn and then uh, we we were just like waiting for all the paramedics and everybody else to get there. Holy yeah. Try, cow! Trying to like you know like help mend the, the mom's arm and get her connected to her husband. So so how long have you been sitting on the story, Justin? <laughs> I would, dude. I texted you guys. I was like, remind me about this. Like that's all I got. How do I have to remind you? Of something <laughs> like that? That's what blew my mind. Yeah. I look up at the notes for today's conversation and I go, wait a second. Doesn't Justin have like a fucking Death defying story to fucking tell it was right crazy, now. Crazy, dude. Bro. Well, it was so crazy. Like, so I told it to my parents because, like, and so meanwhile, like, my kids are in the truck and, like, I'm like, stay in here because I didn't even want to get out of my truck. I was like, I was holding Courtney back. She was like a little pit bull, like, ready to just jump out in ongoing traffic to, yeah. like, save these people. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 let's like assess you Easy know, the nurse environment. Betty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was just like, I'm a nurse. I'm a fucking superhero. <laughs> yeah. you know? And I'm like, I love I love that about you, but let's 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 calm down. Uh and so then, you know, I finally pull over, whatever. And so I'm I'm like locking the, the trucks so the kids, you know, are in there, but I, I felt like uncomfortable leaving them there. They're in there with the iPad, they're filming. So they, they actually filmed when the car caught on fire and oh they got gosh. like, yeah, they got some footage of it and everything. It was pretty oh, crazy. No. Oh, wow. Really? I'll have to show you guys later. So, so your, your wife just leaps to action. Dude. Are you like, at that point, are you like turned on? Yeah. You're like, damn, look at my girl right I now. was a little bit. I'll be honest. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, she's like very, uh, she's very much of a humanitarian, like mm. very like passionate about helping people. And I was like, Oh my God, I didn't know it was at that level, but she's, she's very yeah. like <laughs> aggressively helpful. Yeah, most people are like, damn it. Yeah. Uh, traffic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, ah, and yeah. like, we were just like, take off. Now you we're know? driving slow. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, thank goodness everybody. I'm glad that the story involved, uh, everybody being okay. Yeah. Cause that would have, I would have hated that. Uh, I know. I know. I wouldn't have told the story if it, if it would have gone different. Dude, car, probably. car technology is remarkable these days. Yeah. For that to happen and for people to survive, I can't believe that little little well, girl was was okay. Like it that. sounds like though that if the guy in the Kia had somebody in the back seat, they would have been dead. Oh, right? they'd have been to yeah, completely. Like gone. he, yeah. it sounds like he lucked out just because he was by himself in the front seat, right? If you had somebody, in the, it sounds like it smacked. You it was like a, an accordion. It a, as I say, a Tahoe hits a Kia full on at eighty miles an hour. I mean, that thing just like a can, bro. Yeah. You know what? You know what it would have been if it was like cars from like the seventies. Yeah. Oh my. It would have been oh, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. The technology these days it's is been like demolition derby, where everybody's. Oh well, yeah. hey, I'm mean, glad everybody's okay. Thank you for telling this story finally yeah. about the craziest no thing problem. that's happened to you all. You know, I mean, it's yeah. happened. I could hear Katrina on the phone yeah. with Courtney, and she's like, "Oh my god!" And she's like, "What? What? Are you serious?" And we got so we got over. Yeah, that was crazy. You, I mean, uh, we saved probably an hour and a half, two hours because it was a parking lot. Mm -hmm. We literally, I'm not kidding. Oh, like, so you very, you got lucky to go. We had there. less than 50 yards. 
Like we're in dead stop traffic, and there's oh, the, we there's, got you just in time. There's fif- yeah. fifty yards up. If I got if it was literally a, less than thirty seconds or a minute later that wow. that call doesn't come through, I don't merge over and get off and and then take off in the other direction, and then I would have been sat sat there. It for is hours. really weird to see stuff like that happen right before your eyes. I've seen oh I've seen something like that one time where I was driving down to L.A. with my buddy. And when you, when you start, we took 101. We're going 101 south. We want to take the scenic route or whatever. And at one point, the the side of 101 that's that's going in the opposite direction is higher than the side that I'm on. So there's like an embankment that kind of slopes down. And we're just chilling. It was a normal day. We're driving. All of a sudden, I see I'm like, what is that over there? There's a car rolling down the hill, just flipping down the hill right in front of me. And when you see something like that for a split second, you're like, that's not real. Oh, yeah. I'll, I saw. So this happened to me one time where I was driving behind the uh, a Mercedes SUV, and this lady uh, does a three sixty and then flip, and I'm the car right behind it, and it happens in front of me, and it was the weirdest thing ever because everything slowed down. Mm-hmm. Like when she was spinning around, I could see her. Like we made eye contact. Oh, that's it was the weird. fucking weirdest thing ever. No, seriously. I, the and I mean I swerved. This my reaction. I swerved, got away, and and moved. But when it was happening, it felt like everything froze. It was the weirdest shit ever. For something like that, that for her to go 360 and then flip right in yeah. front of me, me get out. I mean, it had to have been a split second, but it felt like a minute when it all happened. Now, now that's that's a very common. We've all heard of that, right? Like mm-hmm. time slowed that's down. To me before, yeah. It's because your brain literally turns up its ability to perceive. Everything around it's like you. the yeah. processing power just like kicks in it like overtime hard, on, and yeah. all of a sudden everything's like doo, 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 you know yeah. detail slow motion. I can see everything, whereas normally you don't even know what the hell's going on. Wild that that memory is so vivid in my brain because of that too. It's so I forget about what I did yesterday, yeah. but I I still have a very vivid memory of that that moment. What are some of the most like uh, you know where you come where you came this close to death? Moments. Do you guys have anything like? I have one in particular that I well, can't. Well, that, that uh, reminds. Even though I wasn't the one who was probably. I mean, I was well, right. Sure, behind. you were right behind her. Right, right. So that no, felt I, like that. I had a moment where me and my friends. We were young. We were maybe seventeen, and we're in the car, and there's four of us, and we're all you know not paying attention. We're at a stoplight, laughing, joking. Light turns green in the front. We didn't even notice that it turned green. Car behind us honks. My buddy's like, "Oh, okay." Goes to hit the gas right before he hits the gas. A fucking a, a fucking semi comes through the red light with on its brakes sliding through. Had we gone through when the light was green, we would have been gone. It would have been a fucking disaster. We would. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I made up a word right yeah. there. I like that. Fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. Take a little yeah. kid. You know. Yeah. I don't want to say a bad yeah. word, but I'll yeah. say something that sounds. Yeah, like that bad. happened. Well, so I hit black ice when we were coming back from band practice. When I was is that in the Chicago. politically correct term for it? Yeah. It's, okay. It's, Never mind. It, it's fine. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, and same thing, like we hit it on one side. So this is like a five lane freeway. And then I, I was like, oh my God, I, I completely lost control of the car. Like, and I'm pretty good with like hydroplaning and all that kind of stuff. And this was like, I've never experienced like ice where you just don't have any, there's no way to like turn out of it. And so you just go with it. Right. So I'm like, oh, and it was going really slow, which was even worse. You know, I'm just like, just skating, you know, just skating across like five lanes and oh, in my rear view mirror, there's like two huge semis coming and I, and then it like turned me. So I ended up facing them so i'm now now i'm looking at them like straight on like oh my god i'm gonna die and i just i i I punched uh the accelerator and punched myself into the shoulder uh you know the freeway and then got myself out of there with the guys and we were all just like we stayed there for probably an hour just like oh my god these stories okay these stories are are uh for whatever reason, stress relieving right now. I don't know if you guys are, are you guys feeling like, oh, yeah. <laughs> life ain't so yeah, bad. It's not that yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, you guys want to have viruses. A, you, you guys want to talk about, so, so this is what I've been, I figured this out, right? Cause I'm a little, you know, I think we're all under a little bit more stress than normal, right? The unknown, you're at home, you're reading every, you know, you start reading articles about, you know, the world health organization says this and you know, you know, they're extending the, you know, why everybody should stay home and all this stuff. And you start, so I'm, I, I figured this out. It's a bit of a hack. So I wa- I started watching 
documentaries on like real life shit that happened in the past that was terrible just to make me kind of <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of if course this is a, where you live, I'm not dude. sure this is a good strategy or dude, not dude it is it like, is really? I, yeah because I'm watching and I'm like wait the, what, yeah, what am I tripping over yeah. I watched a documentary uh, Peter Jackson uh, produced it I've never seen this it's so good well, he does epic films oh bro yeah. so good called They Shall Not Grow Old have you guys seen this no uh-uh. it's about World War One, and in it they interview Actual, you know, and these, you know, I'm sure these people are dead now, but he interviewed people who served in World War One uh, uh, from in England, and while it's while they're they're talking about what it was like, they have film, real film from World War One, and they colorized it and digitized it so it looks like the like the clearest. Oh, that's like what Doug was uh, recommending. Oh. What was that show that you recommended? The greatest <clears throat> moments of World War II. Well, yeah, so, we so, so this was different than a normal documentary where they're explaining what's happening, the strategies. This is, they're talking about the actual everyday life <clears throat> of these soldiers. <clears throat> and when you're listening to these guys, you're just like, they're talking about how you know what it's like living in the trenches. And yeah, he's trench like, foot. Oh, dude! Oh, they were horrible. showing pictures of it and people Ugh. getting their feet chopped off. And how he goes, yeah, he goes, you know, he goes, lice was a terrible problem. He goes, what you would do like is you mustard would, gas, you is would, a, uh, you know, pending. Oh, and, and these guys are talking about it like, yeah, oh, it was a great time because we all stuck together and this and that, and <laughs> you know. And he's like, this is just how you survive. And I'm watching it. I'm like, well, that's, well I'm kind of stuck at home with you know yeah. Netflix. Yeah, we're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, yeah. I'm baking. Yeah. Yeah. My, I'm tired of speeding home. Yeah. My, my biggest stress right now is that streaming is slowing down because so many people are streaming. Dude. <laughs> dude. Are you guys? How's uh, your guys' diet? So right? soft. I, I'm like, dude. I am finding myself distracting myself with not the greatest food right now. Well, it's been mm. worse since I've been home. Like th- since we've been home, it's been uh, a little more challenging than up at Tahoe. Tahoe having the garage gym and going out there and hiking and playing in the snow. Like mm. I felt like yeah. I, I've already. It's been rougher since i've been home yeah yeah it's been okay yeah i would say like i was actually not too bad except for we wanted to go out to to support some of the restaurants in the area because it's like there's one of them it's like our favorite and they're doing like takeout yeah and so we're like oh we gotta we gotta keep them in business you know that's like mm-hmm. the whole initiative with us going there really but uh it was kind of funny because i'm not going to name their name because uh we know the bartender and he's like oh and here's some like premium margaritas to go and to go cups i'm like oh. is this legal <laughs> <laughs> but thank you bro yeah. yeah so that was great i gave a um there's a restaurant that we go to uh, sometimes in San Jose, a Peruvian restaurant, and uh, you know we, we called in an order. I went to go pick it up, and I saw the owner, and I'm like, "How's business?" You know, and he's like, "Oh, it's terrible, this and that." So I gave him a hundred dollar bill. I said, "Keep the change or whatever," because mm-hmm. I felt like you know I wanted to kind of support well, him. Speaking of that, I was reading a, a statistic that uh, J.P. Morgan had just put up. They had found in 2016 that the median independent restaurant has enough cash to last 16 days, and independent retailers 19 days. Yeah. So that's how that's how people devast- don't reala- yeah people don't realize how devastating already this is this yeah. is for most catastrophic. All. Well, they they yeah, run some industries. They, yeah, because they run on very lean margins. Uh, yeah, people yeah. don't they think that they're all you know rolling in dough, but they it's such a competitive industry that your margins are always very very slim. Um, and you know, sixteen days of cash it isn't bad for a lot of businesses, but it's right catastrophic. Oh, you know, yeah. right now, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm eating just it, so I finally gave in. I, I've just uh, you know I, I'm eating more. I'm just eating a lot because I'm at home and you know I think it just it's comforting. Mm-hmm. So I'm like you know what I I, I give up. Was bulk? No, I said <laughs> <laughs> that's what no, I said. bro. I'm beyond bulk right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, okay. I I I said to Jessica, I said let's just we'll buy snacks. But let's just have healthier snacks. Yeah, better stuff. Yeah, like I'm not, I can't not eat right now because. Yeah, that's the move. Yeah, so, you know, with th- think what a great time to be working with uh, a new sponsor. Uh, what is it, Paleo Valley, the meat sticks? Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, it's a, it's a meat. Oh, it's they're a, delicious. Yeah, it's a, it's a grass fed, high protein meat Bro, stick. Bro, those are the best beef jerky steaks that I've ever had. By far. Yeah. Yes. By far. They're crushing right now, too. Of course. Oh, yeah. Everybody is ordering like crazy on, on their, their beef. They're also, you know, the other one, they, they, so they do other stuff, too. Like we, we talk big on their, their beef sticks because it's obviously what we consume the most of. But I was actually just talking to them last week, and they're completely like sold out of like their vitamin C. Mm. Um, because that didn't an article just come out? I saw Ben Greenfield talked about that. A few recently. of them. I thought you talked about that, Sal. Yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in New York, they're finding intravenous they, uh, it, vitamin C. Yeah, and they found it. Uh, this was true in China and I believe France. 
that when they were giving people high doses of vitamin C intravenously, that um, uh, that it was it was helping mm-hmm. quite a bit. I don't know if that translates though to oral vitamin C. Oh, yeah. really? I don't well. know. I mean, there's a big difference between you know yeah. intravenous and oral. Yeah, but it still gets into your bloodstream, right? It does, but I don't know if you could tolerate the doses. May not be as potent. Well, because you know. the intravenous doses they were giving them was like thousands and thousands of milligrams, you know, spread out every two or three hours. Oh wow, that's a lot. Yeah, if you did like two, three thousand. I mean, it's vitamin C, so the the odds, the side effects of taking too much aren't bad. I think it's like an increased risk of kidney stones or something like that. But if you take like thousands of milligrams of vitamin C, you know, a few times a day, you're probably going to get diarrhea. Mm. You're oh. probably going to get gut issues, which might not be no great. toilet paper. So. I would, I would yeah. think, it's I would think if you, if you couldn't do it, uh, you couldn't take an IV, I would still think that taking it would still be better than not. I right? would agree. Right. I, I mean, would agree. Even if it's not as much uh, as that, yeah. I would still think that's not a bad idea. I mean, I have, I've been taking that. I mean, that's what I've been doing. So I mean, I I don't know if it's working as well, but it's better than not. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. it's it's interesting, right? Because vitamin C for so long has been, you know, they've been talking about how it's an immune booster, but then for so long we've heard that that's oh no, it's not. Right. But now they're showing in these studies that. Speaking of which, um, they approved the use of hydroxychloroquine. Is that how you say it? The the malaria drug. It's now approved in nice. combination with because we were talking about how the studies were showing that it might help. Yeah, another study came out <clears throat> that showed that it's that it helped. Oh, so it, that that in combination with azithromycin um, is what they're what they're doing. But you know that the did you guys know that uh, fish tank cleaners contain like a version of that, and some people have been taking that thinking it'll help them, and they die. I think that's where all the memes are coming from, wow. right? The yeah. jokes of people drinking the the, the Clorox bleach uh, and all that weird shit. shit. Yeah. What is wrong with people? People are idiots. <laughs> what is wrong with people? Dude, but I have to, like, so I got a bunch of messages uh, uh, about uh, that medication, about uh, uh, the, the one for malaria, because I brought yeah. up, like, it gives people nightmares, and, like, I had so many people confirming that, to, you know, in, in my DMs and stuff. I was like, oh, I knew it. I knew I had heard that, because even on one of them, I don't know if this is true or not, but they said that like may cause like you know demonic uh, you know sightings and like uh, oh you gosh. know visions of of uh, you know terrible like night terror like type uh, you know nightmares. So, oh. so could could some people have have you know have indefinite nightmares after it, like they've even reported. You mean could, when they've gone off? Yeah, even oh, that's weird off. when you go off. Oh, Katrina sucks. gets it from uh, hydrocoding. So if she oh, takes, really? yeah, she takes like a Vicodin or a Percocet or something like that, she'll get nightmares. I've been having that's weird. To I've me. been having weird dreams. That would suck. I've been having these weird stress dreams where, like, I I, I I usually don't have these kind of dreams, but for like two or three nights in a row, I have a dream. I had one dream that all of a sudden I was a general manager of a gym again. <laughs> and yes. I was like all sad about it. Cause I'm like, fuck man, I gotta do this oh, again. Man. And I, I walked, <laughs> I've already been here. How yeah, did I dude. get back here? Yeah. And I walked in, <laughs> you know, just check this out. So I walk in and I'm like, whatever, I'm going to make the best of it. And yeah. there was like one of my sales managers or whatever was, you know, giving someone a free pass. So I sit down to introduce myself and I start trying to talk to them about getting personal training, you know, cause that's yeah. what you do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the sales and the person who worked for me, would say to me out loud while I'm doing this, like, stop, stop, just give him the free pass. No, don't try and so and I was like, I'm gonna <laughs> Yeah, we don't do it like that. I'm gonna now. <laughs> kick you in your face. You know? What do you mean? What are you talking about? And I woke up It's like, not protocol. I woke up and I was like, Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, that's probably how it is now. Yeah. The aggressive sales tactics. What a like, terrible yeah. dream. <laughs> hey, you guys remember um when I brought up on the show probably about I'd say two months ago, the the app called Parked with the parking spaces. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Where people like, can rent their own parts. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like in front of their driveway or So whatever. another company, okay, called Neighbor.com. It's like that on steroids. So all the same possibilities. You can rent a parking space. But this, Neighbor.com, allows you to rent any space. So let's say like, like my quad, I want to store it in somebody has a room in their garage. They can rent a eight by eight space in their garage and they dictate the amount. I agree on it and I do it. Oh, wow. Versus like paying some huge storage unit or, you know, being subject to their rates, these neighbors can now use each other to store each other's stuff. So you got a bunch of boxes and you've completely filled up your attic or whatever and you want mm. to store it, but then you don't want to pay 180 or like here in San Jose, I think it's like 200 bucks plus. Finally a place for my meth lab material. No, isn't this? <laughs> Whoa, bro. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> got to make, gotta make use of You've it. You've been watching yeah. too much Tiger King. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Breaking Bad over here, guy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, so how cool is that though? Brilliant. It's so I, brilliant because what it's doing, what people don't realize about stuff like that is it it dramatically increases the efficiency of space of people working together. Yes. And for the economy, it's so great because if you think about it, if you have unused space, which most of us do, right? Oh, yeah. Unused space in the garage or in the yard. Or, Just watch that minimalist uh, documentary. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, exactly. They do that, right? They show heat maps on people's homes yeah. and people spend 99% of the time in like 30% of the house. So you have all this wasted space that could be used to generate revenue. And then there's all these people that need that space to store things. What a brilliant- And neighbor.com insures up to $2 million. Oh, brilliant. So, I mean, as long as you're not storing $2 million worth of stuff at somebody's house, like that, because that would be my first fear, right? Like yeah. some random Joe really Smoe's like, stuff, yeah. yeah, they're yeah. like, yeah, you can leave your quad here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I leave my $10,000 quad yeah. there and it's gone, right? <laughs> Look at two months yeah. later, some shit, they move with it, right? Yeah. But it's insu you're insured up to $2 million with that. So it kind of gets rid of that fear. Huh. But and what you're going to see, I imagine... Is people that have an acre lot or whatever, you could start throwing up little sheds with your own security cameras and start having your own little storage units sure. on your property wow. and make decent money. What a disrupting technology right. for, for right? storage units. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I, I mean, I've ar I've already been interested in the storage unit business as it is, but Not now. this is going to yeah. this is going to shake it I up. I know. Yeah. That's Think about that. Oh, I mean, you don't even I, need like that all that structure anymore. It's just like well, give me a property. You throw it on your own property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many people have like a a, a Lot that's big enough to throw a, a big enough shed on there, and the because stored at least here in the Bay Area, like uh, you know, in the, it depends on where you are in the country. There's probably some reasonable rates, but man, I I remember when we moved this last time, and I we we rented a storage unit just to hold the furniture for a while. I'm like, Jesus! After two or three months, I could have just bought all new furniture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a few hundred dollars a month for a, a decent, not even a big storage unit here yep. in the Bay Area. So it's like, man, that's ridiculous. And that's going to make it much cheaper. Right. Yeah. Because people have their own property they can paid put, off. And and people can put it at whatever price they want. So, so if real I, competitive. Yeah, if I want to just help somebody out, and I also, hey, make 50, 50 extra bucks a month or whatever like that, and I've got two or three people doing that, brilliant. Yeah. I love that. I right? think that's brilliant. I love seeing, too, how circumstances change, uh, you know, how people kind of move around and figure things out. Like, that's a kind, that's a technology that's, you know, was created because there seems there was a need for it. A lot of people have extra space. People need to rent space out. Let's figure out a way to connect these people. Um, another thing that's starting to happen right now is, and I think this is great. So, so I started this uh, a few days ago where uh, Jessica and I were, you know, we were missing people. And so I said, you know what? What if we drive to our family family members' homes, stay in the car in the street? <laughs> <laughs> they stay in the, they stay at the, and they're on their like, porch. Make a sign. No, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. No, that, no. <laughs> they stay. They stay at the door. We yeah. stay in the car. I, I just turn the car off or whatever, and we talk. And we're you know 15 feet away, and we hang out a little bit and talk and see each other. And it was so awesome. So then my oh, you mom did this. I did. Oh, <laughs> so then my mom did this. My mom. It's like one of those drive-through safaris. Yeah, dude. You know, so my mom did this. She, she drove to her her sister's house, all of her kids' houses, just parked in front. <clears throat> Jessica and I got chairs, sat in the garage. My parents sat in the car, and again, we're far di far enough distance apart, and they just yeah. stayed in the car, and we just hung out for thirty minutes. And so then my cousin, his 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 little girl, um, just turned seven. And she was really sad about her birthday because mm -hmm. she can't have her friends over, mm -hmm. all stuff. So, and I saw this made me so emotional. So, what they did is they planned a parade. So, all of her friends and all of her friends, their parents got in their cars, and she sat outside. His his daughter sat outside. They had balloons. You know, my cousin and his wife sat there on their lawn, and all of her friends drove by with balloons and signs. And said happy birthday as they drove. Oh, that's cool. As they drove by. Oh, I thought like I saw you do float. a video of that. Did you do a video of that? Um, Who did a video of that? I thought uh, I saw it was that. My cousin. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. I saw someone. Yeah, it must have been somebody attached to you. Then. No, that's yeah. a great idea. How nice is that? Yeah, yeah. That's I cool. actually thought of you because uh, I saw somebody in public uh, the other day with this huge hula hoop. Right. What? And it was. <laughs> it, it, was it was attached <laughs> because it was attached to them, so it was like out, you know, a safe distance, and it, they were like bumping into people because it was like in their proximity. You oh, know, it was like too close. So. That's their six foot. Yeah, that's their six foot reach. Like it was like surrounding them like a force field. Dude, I, I thought you were gonna bring up Sal being a hula hoop champion when he was in high school. Well, yeah. that too. A lot of yeah, people don't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he can really move those hips. Hips can circle. Yeah, they, they don't lie. They can His circle. His hips don't lie. Really good, dude. I said hi to. 
the crazy cat lady in my neighborhood that I always ignore. For wow. the first time. I always ignore. She's Probably weird. made her day. She's so weird, dude. Every morning, you know, if I work out. Does she look at you and just like hiss? No, <laughs> n- no, none of that. So I have my, I'll open my garage. I'll, I'll be lifting. And every day, I don't know where she comes from. She drives up and she feeds stray cats. Like, like there's like 15 stray cats and she feeds them. I had a neighbor like that. Every yeah. single day. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, oh, you know, the crazy cat lady. Well, this morning I'm working out and I'm just, you know, I'm like aching for human contact. So as she walks by, I'm like, hey, you know, she looks at me like, hey, how you holding up? She's like, I'm doing okay. I'm like, all right, cool. This is perfect for me. I don't like people. It it was the first time. Dude, you want to hear something infuriating? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know what the uh, what the wet markets are in China and in other parts of Asia? Oh no! These, you know? Yes, I you, know. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So no, no, no. Explain. What's a, what's, what do you mean wet market? So <clears throat> wet markets are where they sell exotic animals, weird and, shit for yeah. people. Oh, to eat. did you see the video that Jordan Shallow just did there? No. Oh, you oh, I did. Yes, and he was walking through there, and he was like, "Oh my God, this would get shut down in a heartbeat oh, in dude. the U.S." So we, 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 you know, it's widely believed that that this virus came from the, a wet market where they were eating either bats or a weird animal. What's called a pangolonian or COVID? something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like an aardvark almost. Kind of yeah, weird. it's like an aardvark. Uh, just weird animals, and you know, after all, if, after all the quarantine, all that stuff, and China's like, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna. We're going to ban these. Now they're back open serving weird, strange animals. Uh, yeah, I just again. read that they were banning it. Like, so they already reopened it? I, so you're right. They said they were going to ban it. And then, no, I read an article that they're. Well, it's like a are- two, it's a two point something billion dollar industry. Like, I mean, it's the biggest in China Dude. because, like, they're all. Uh, consuming these uh, you know, exotic animals, like, eat- it doesn't matter what it is. No. It's like it, because it has medicinal value of something, and it's like <clears throat> it's always their penis. <clears throat> Why? <laughs> Why is it the really? penis? Yeah, they always take the penis or the horn, you know, and it's like disregard the rest of the animal. It's like I'm, let, we need that penis. There's magic in there. Yeah, there's magical penis. <laughs> magic wing. I've been yeah. saying that about mine for years. Yeah. So. Well, if you were yeah, good thing you're Sell not in China. over there. <laughs> there would be, yeah. you know, you add them on the table. See what you get for it? Eat this magic magic penis. Yeah. You could feed a family of four. Hey, Justin, did you feel? Did you? I appreciate that. We got no, that. Fam- that. Family of fours. That's a that's hey. a lot of that's a lot of meat, bro. Yeah. So. We got we got. Left Leftovers. Yeah, it's yeah. a hearty meal, right? This will hold us over for yeah. a month. Yeah, nice <laughs> Could be scoop. worse. Could starve an infant. You hey, know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, uh, you know what I'm doing to you? It that, doesn't matter. You're, you're married anyway. But when we watched that one comedian who uh, was dating Ariana Grande, oh yeah, yeah, and he said that she screwed him because she told everybody had big dicks, and now he's like, now when I pull it out, everybody's disappointed. Oh, that was the most brilliant thing <laughs> yeah, ever. I, I thought yeah. that was hilarious. Yeah. But anyway, so back to China. Um, they there's reports coming out now that they are totally lying about the amount of people that died. In Wuhan and all that stuff. Why is it not surprising? So there was a huge shipments shipment of urns full shipments. of people's uh, you know cremated re- remains or whatever. Yeah. And so people are, are videotaping and be like, yeah, that's ten thousand or whatever urns. This is not. They said the deaths were X amount of thousand. There's no way because look at all these, whatever. <sighs> and then there was riots. Did you guys hear about this? Uh-uh. There were riots <clears throat> in the Wuhan area because when they finally let the people out, <clears throat> people were so <clears throat> mad at the draconian way that they were kept in their houses mm-hmm. by some people starved uh some people got beat uh you know within inches of their life just for walking out of their house so now that they're letting them out there was like riots and stuff they're like fuck you guys you know you were bringing something uh, up i think it's important to know too that uh that cuz i know there's a lot of people that are still like freaking out right now um but what we're seeing right now in the US is is pretty positive i mean i feel like uh just what a week and a half ago um, people were panicking and saying we were going to be Italy in a week. Mm-hmm. And here we're a week later and we're definitely not like Italy whatsoever. And considering how big of a country we are, um, I would say that we are keeping the the death toll down reasonably low other than the few areas like New York or where it hit the uh, you know uh, retirement home or whatever in uh, Seattle. I mean, for the most part, the, the death toll is relatively low. And it's crazy because... W- to, so far, I, right? Yeah. I mean, things change so fast. <clears throat> well, yeah. And even if it, even if it were to increase or uh, stay on this pace for the next two months straight, it still wouldn't catch what the flu has done. Hmm. You know, they, I saw I saw what the CDC had put out for the last six months of, of the flu uh, over the last six months. It was October to February. Yeah, it was six months. Yeah. 
and it was a total of what thirty to fifty thousand deaths. Thirty to sixty is what yeah. they estimate. Yeah, in just that period of time. Well, I mean, and they estimate that's probably what we're going to see from COVID. Well, mm-hmm. so here's the thing, though. What they keep saying, God, I, I don't know if you guys are doing this, but I keep going flipping back and forth. Like, you know, one day I'm like, I do too. Yeah, one day I'm like, ah, this is overreaction. The other day I'm like, lock it down. Yeah. Um, that what they say is that they're that they're trying to prevent hospitals from getting overrun. So although the flu does cause lots of deaths and stuff, it's right. not like all at once. Right. Whereas this has the potential, according to what the they're saying. Well, so this, this is, <clears throat> I agree with what we're doing. I do. I, I I think it's I think it's smart. I think it's uh, especially with when you talk about what's going on in the hospitals. Um, what where I'm on the fence is. You know, could we have done this like getting rid of like a lot of the crazy high traffic areas, but still allowed businesses to operate somehow? Because what I'm right. now concerned about is uh, what I've been saying since day one is economically what's going to happen to us. Could that potentially be worse long term to a lot of people than what we're potentially going through right now? Yeah, so can't they open up some of these businesses and like <laughs> let people in one at a time and like just manage it uh, more specifically like that? So the traffic of it and like people can keep their space. And, you know, at, at some point we have to get a little bit more creative with that uh, in terms of being able to help, you know, these businesses come back to life. Yeah. You don't want to be in a situation where the medicine is worse than the disease and you know wide ranging economic destruction <clears throat> causes <clears throat> lots and lots of deaths yeah. downstream so a lot of people don't you know they don't I mean what would ha- what would happen if you just mandated that everybody who comes into a business has to have a mask and gloves on there I would go. think that would minimize it dramatically if we had they enough could, we it's the problem with that is that we don't right now but we will or, yeah. we don't right now but we will yeah. i mean you're, you're talking about companies I, I told i think i brought that up on one of the last episodes we did that are now pivoting over to make masks and they're talking about putting out millions per week mm-hmm. so you know maybe at this moment and then i saw the 3d printer somebody came up with mm-hmm. a, a 3d uh, the ability to 3d print these mm-hmm. so you know, before long, we should be in a place where you can get these masks. And, you know, I would think that, okay, let's allow business to come up. The stipulation is for people to come into the, the business. You had rubber gloves and a mask on. Um, I would, and I, and I know that that's not still the most ideal situation, but to uh, still allow us to get the economy going back again, I would think that would be. Well, so what, here's what I think the strategy is going to be after all is said and done. Cause as of the, the time of recording this, uh, Trump said he ex- extended the, you know, what do they call it? Um, shelter in place. Yeah, shelter in place till the end of April. I have the, the way that I think that they're going to start to move things forward eventually will be um, people with pre existing illnesses and people over a certain age. Right. You guys remain at home. Uh, everybody else, you know, let's keep, let's, let's, let's prevent people from having more than 10 people at a time, you know, so keep, keep uh, groups small. And I think the eventual strategy is going to be testing people for antibodies. Mm. And if they find that you have antibodies, okay, cool, you can go do whatever. But if you don't have antibodies, you know, be very careful. And then, you know, vaccine. And I know that the the vaccine, they're moving fast with that. I think that the that the that the the next trials are going to be almost ready by September. Wow. Which I'm, you know, hoping that that you know that moves forward. But you almost, you know, what it is. I heard this this analogy, and I thought, what a great analogy. It's like you go to the doctor and you have an infected finger and the doctor said, let's cut your hand off. You know what I mean? Because we don't want it to spread for the whole body. When the, when the, when the treatment might be just some antibiotic ointment or a dose of antibiotics. Yeah. So but you we, don't have that yet. Yeah, we want to be careful. We want to be careful that we don't go so hard and so far that we cause more problems. There's so many unknowns. It's, and when you look at like the way it is in the country, you're right, New York is – not doing great. California, which is a huge state, lots of huge population. We seem to be doing okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, we, we came out well. the gate, especially our here, Santa Clara County. We were the first place to go shelter in place. Yeah. So I, I think that helped, you know, I, a lot. I, I Speaking agree. of expiring, this is a, is a bad transition. But, <laughs> what? Uh, you know what doesn't expire ever, like indefinitely? What? Honey. Oh. I did, did know Did you that. know that? I did know that. They like, found- They found it like 3,000-year-old- uh, in, in an Egyptian tomb, they found honey. I read this. And it's still edible to this day. It's crystallized and everything. I'm like, still what in the fuck? Dude, honey is so antibacterial and antiviral that you could just keep it. Yeah. 
Isn't that crazy? That something is crazy. something to it. That man. is crazy. Did you see the? Did uh, Marcucci? He normally sends the same thing to all of us to our buddy Jay. Yeah. Did he send you the ants that made the? the oh, the bridge. Yeah, oh, the bridge yeah. Yeah. to each other. I saw that. Did you see that? Yeah, that, that was, was wild, yeah, dude. Cool. That was like from. I mean, they were. I don't know. I'd say a good ten foot drop mm -hmm. from a from like a, a rooftop. Yeah. And they actually created a bridge, and then we're, we're transporting all the honey from the hive. Oh, they're, that was brilliant. They're crazy. I'm going to start rubbing yeah. honey all over myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's some kind of some kind of fountain of youth there. Just walking in yeah. all, all yeah, glistening. All <laughs> you know? Hey, did you, guys see the did you guys see the video of the, the high school wrestler? Um, he's like 16-year-old, 17-year-old kid who saw a grown man try to kidnap someone, and he just fucking no. double leg takedown. Yes. No. Oh, yeah. Dude, I love those videos. Smashed his ass. No. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. It was really cool to watch. That reminds me, remember when the MMA chick that beat the dude's ass that was trying to like rob her or take I, her purse or something? I, I love that. Yeah. I, so I thought that was such a great... <laughs> I love it when bad people get their asses... That's maybe a bad thing to say, but... If you're, <laughs> yeah. a, if you're a bad guy and you get yeah, your you're ass You're doing kicked, bad shit, you get your ass kicked. I'm hey. cheering. Yeah. First question is for from Oriana Fitness. Could you guys please list the absolute must-dos to maintain your physique during a quarantine? <laughs> absolute must-dos. Okay. Uh, I'll start with the easy ones, and we can then we can kind of go into a little more detail. But number one, daily activity, yeah. I think, is important because your total daily steps, however low they were before, is way lower now. Mm -hmm. uh, I know for me, the... You know, if I'm not exercising or actively going for a walk, I'm not moving. Well, I can't, I can't yeah. stress that one enough because when you work out in, in, in for an hour, in people's head they register as like I was really active today. Mm -hmm. But if if you worked out for a one hour block, where let let's just say a good hard workout is 400 to 600 calories tops, mm -hmm. you're burning. And then the rest of the day, you're dramatically sedentary. Even though you worked out, you weren't very active, and your your total calorie burn for the day is extremely low. Somebody who makes a point to walk all day long, let's say you go for three one-hour walks for the day, and but you don't lift weights and exercise, that person who went for the three one-hour walks is going to burn way more total calories in the day than that person who just worked out vigorously for one hour. So totally. you got to put that into perspective and I think that somebody who's never tracked and really paid attention to their average daily movement when we were working and we were moving and on a, on a regular basis mm -hmm. uh, is is what's getting thrown off so bad. I remember getting my mind blown as a trainer when the those tr the the first like body bug yeah, yeah. trackers kind of came out where you could put it on it would track your calories burned it would track your steps all that stuff and I remember. I look at the reports of my clients and I'd see that, you know, my client burned more calories on Saturday and Sunday than they did on the days during the week when they were shopping worked out. or it was cleaning like house. Infuriating. Yeah, and yeah. and I'd be like, What did you do Saturday? You yeah. burned way more calories. Well, like, I, I don't dishes. Yeah, I don't work I was, out. Yeah, and I'd be like, sweeping. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I cleaned the whole house. Or I went to the mall yeah. and I was shopping all day. Or I was washing the cars. And that's when it really hit me, like, oh crap, okay, you know, just because you work out once doesn't mean you're super active. And here's the other side of this that's a big plus. If you're stuck at home and you're fighting off, you know, the, the anxiety and the fear and the boredom. Stress eat. Yeah. Yeah. No, besides the eating, working out throughout the day, like you said, Adam, walk in the morning, walk in the afternoon, walk in the evening, makes a huge yeah. difference. And then on top of that, when they do studies comparing, you know, somebody working out for two hours versus somebody breaking up a two-hour workout throughout the day, they actually find – that breaking it up throughout the day burns more body fat and preserves more muscle. Mm -hmm. um, now, the second part you just said, Adam, was the stress eating. Right. That's a big one, man. And you got to figure out strategies to avoid that. And I've, I've had to work through this myself. And one of the strategies I've come up with is at first I tried to just not eat the you know bad food or whatever. Didn't work. I, I'm, I'm, it's too accessible. I got too much stuff going on where I'm, I'm a little bit stressed. And it's just not working. So now I've moved to phase two, which is I'm only having healthy snacks in the house. And if I want to eat them, I do. And that's already made a, a tremendous difference. So this is, it takes a lot of discipline to do this, but this I, I too have been battling this. I mean, we're just like everybody else. So there's moments where I find myself binging a Netflix series and I've been sitting on the couch for hours at a time and then I'm wanting to snack on things. So well, when I catch myself in those moments... I try and get up and go find something physical for me to do. Like mm -hmm. I, I, one of the things that when this happened to me just uh, day before yesterday, uh, I needed to wash my truck. We just got back from Tahoe. It was just, and it was a 
disaster. Like I knew it was going to be like a multiple hour project to do, but I just needed to move and do something like that. So it doesn't always have to be like this vigorous exercise that you need to do. The must do's is being mindful of your movement and then making sure that you do it. Now in a perfect world, you're exercising and tra doing a training routine, right? You're following your maps anywhere, or if you have an at-home gym and following one of the other programs, you're sticking to your routine. And then in addition to that, you're also trying to move. But at the bare minimum, when I think of must-dos, you've got to get out and get some activity. you got to yeah. get out and Home move. Home Depot's still uh, open. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been making multiple I, trips and, and making little projects that I've been meaning to get to, like painting this or that, you know, chopping down the chicken coop, like re renovating outside. I'm just like a busy body intentionally just because I got to get out of the house. I got to get out of like this room, that room, sitting here, you know, like I, I'm driving me crazy. Justin's going to have like a six-story house when this no, is No, so <laughs> it's funny you bring that up because yesterday, you know, Katrina and I, we, this is what we do. Like we go on a, multiple walks a day at least and then we of course try and get our workout in. And yesterday uh, we were on our second or third walk of the day and we're going through our neighborhood and we're kind of like weaving in and out of all the, all the houses. And I think we saw three different garages that were open and dads were out there sawing Ooh, wood yeah, and, yeah. And, and staining wood and painting. I've like, seen the same thing. Yes, dude. I'm like, oh, this is so great. Like the honeydew lists are getting done right now. Yeah. So well, yeah, I mean, are so happy right now. I, I think that's uh, to me, those are uh, the must do's. And then, and then also being mindful if you're not, because let's be real, uh, being completely transparent and honest, there's absolutely been days where like, like the day before I was really active and I worked out good and I ate good and I tell Katrina, you know, we're going to chill today. You know, I'm going to do anything. We're going to enjoy having the day off and just play with Max in the house all mm -hmm. day. So, but when I do that, I have to be extremely mindful of the difference in calorie burn that I'm probably going through. And so my eating has to adjust to that. So you, you, you've got to either one, make a conscious effort every day to be very active, moving, walking, doing some, doing physical activities, in addition, hopefully you're working out too. If you don't, you need to definitely modify your diet. And whether that's you you do well with a, skipping a meal uh, and not eating or intermittent fasting during that time or just smaller portions or like Sal, I think recommended the other day, which I think is great is, you know, minimizing your carbohydrate intake. You know, you need to be mindful of this stuff. So to me, when I think of must do's, I think uh, one, you need to incorporate uh, multiple walks throughout the day. Uh, on top of hopefully your workouts and then when and if you don't uh, being mindful of that and reducing your your yeah, and intake. you can make you know you can make some of this activity a family fun thing you know like uh, I was mopping the floors <laughs> put music on and we're just all having a good time doing it together um, and and now the reason why I'm saying that is because the mental state that you go into this stuff is going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. If it's if your mental state is poor and you feel like you're forcing yourself to be very difficult to stay consistent. If your mental state is I'm going to make the I'm accepting the fact that I got to do this stuff and I'm gonna, I'm going to make the best of it. Um, you're more likely uh, to stay consistent. So next question is from an Orthodox <clears throat> Fitness me. What is one thing that each of you does on a daily basis as far as general maintenance for your body or something to improve on the daily? Hmm. Uh, I mean, the easy one is, is, is exercise and working out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, on a very consistent basis, you know, luckily I have a, a gym in the garage and I go out there and I do something. Um, so some, I typically will alternate between heavy workouts and then the days in between is when I go out there and I just touch body parts with lighter exercises or I'm working on full range of motion or I'm doing things that work on my mobility. But I would say that's probably the most consistent thing that I do. Now, the other thing I started adding is I'm trying to make more of an effort to have some kind of a daily spiritual practice. Um, I think the necessity of that is just higher now. I think mm. the, the you know, kind of what everybody's going through, I find way more value in having a, a daily, you know, spiritual practice. So I'm, I'll watch preachers or pastors or spiritual leaders talk. Um, and, and, you know, I, I normally, I just, it makes me feel better because a lot of the messages that I'm, that tend to come across and you find this common among all most uh, you know, popular spiritual practices is this message of acceptance, but they, they, they present it in different ways. And I find that the message of acceptance 
is helping me the most right now. So as as of right now, that's something that I'm you know making effort. I would say uh, mobility and reading for me. Uh, those there's a lot of days that go by that I don't get a lift in. Like uh, I, I'd like to to say that every day I'm training and lifting weights, but the reality is, is I'm not. Um, and but what I'm really good about is you know there's a handful of uh, movements from our Maps Prime Pro that have just been life changing for me. Uh, in fact, I got tagged on a post uh, the other day. Um, somebody tagged me because Mark Bell was showing that he couldn't get down in a full squat, and somebody tagged me and said you should you know talk to Adam. And you know his response was he's been friends with Kelly Starrett for you know decades and still can't doesn't believe that he can do it. And I I was in the same camp. I thought the same thing about myself. I didn't think that uh, I would ever be able to get down in a you know, bottom squat and sit there comfortably. It just, it, the little bit of effort I'd put towards it just never felt like it. I was in pain and uh, didn't feel like it was possible. But, you know, it took, a, it took a few years of being very, very consistent. And and I'm very mindful of the, the work that it took to get to where I'm at now that I appreciate it so much that I make sure to do a few of these mobility drills every single day just to kind of say it. And I know that even if I just put a few minutes of effort towards them, that I'll keep that range of motion up, which has just been life-changing for me. I mean, I had bursitis in my hips. I had chronic low back pain all the time. Even though I was buff and looked good, uh, I felt kind of miserable. And that's been gone for two years now. And so I've made it a daily practice to to always, you know, hit my 90-90, hit some combat, uh, hit some thread the needles. Like there's a handful of movements that, you know, that we have in Prime Pro that I made like a ritual to always make sure that I do. Uh, and then the other thing would be reading, uh, whether that be like articles, uh, newsletters, or diving into the books that I'm reading or listening to. Uh, try and make a, a practice of that, even if it's for just a short period of time, uh, being consistent with that. Uh, that's one of the the single uh, most important things that I have found with continued growth for myself. Uh, so those two practices, I'd say, uh, I've been really good about always making sure that's a daily practice, and then I'm striving to uh, make sure that I have my workouts. But the reality is, those don't always happen. Uh, but the reading and the mobility does. Yeah, I've definitely ritualized uh, certain mobility moves uh, on a daily basis, mainly because of recognizing how my habits had changed based off of you know what I do what I do for a living now. I'm not up uh, re-racking people's weights. I'm not uh, walking around constantly and so I'm sitting in the chair or I'm sitting in my truck or you know lots of sitting. So like half the day um, I'm I'm trying to be very mindful of sitting in a squat. I'm I'm either in Seiza or I'm in 90-90 or I'm, you know, down in Pigeon before the boys or the dogs attack me, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm basically down there and then just doing my thing, whether the TV's on, whether I'm, uh, you know, like at home or I'm here, I, if, if there's an opportunity for me to kind of sit in, in sort of a mobility pose or yoga pose or something I can do to restore my hips and, uh, you know, my shoulders, getting rotation out of my shoulders constantly because that's something that if I don't do that, I can just feel uh, the stiffness and, and, you know, the pain uh, as a result of when I go back to lifting weights, uh, all that stuff, uh, you know, you, you start to feel that uh, intensify. And so I'm just very mindful of constantly moving my body and trying to keep, uh, you know, that, you know, oiled, like a well-oiled machine. Uh, and, you know, in, in terms of that, like... I, I intentionally try to take everyone in the family out on a walk. And this is something that Courtney sort of helped me with uh, every time I'm home is, is we get out and we go walk and we, it doesn't matter where we go. We have trails near my house. There's a, a field that we go a lot of times to take the dogs, but I use that time to rough house with the kids, but then also we just connect and we're able to talk, uh, you know, and communicate a lot better when we're active and moving together as opposed to sitting and trying to recap people's days. So that's definitely something I always do. Next question is from Jay Emke. What have you guys been doing to stay mentally fit during the lockdown? I've been able to stay physically active for the most part, but with the lack of social activity and outside stimulus, I'm finding it hard to stay mentally engaged on a daily basis. I like this question because, uh, you know, it seems like everybody is talking about the fitness thing. You know, how do I keep my gains? How do I not lose muscle? Like, right. what, what program can I do at home? And and not a lot of people. And I think probably one of the most challenging things uh, for us, if not now, will be in the next 30 to 60 days is the 
uh, the mental side totally. and the insanity and being, and being okay with that. And so I love this question for that. And I think it's really important. And I think it starts with, uh, reframing your situation. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Sal, you, you kind of alluded to this, uh, in the intro today about, you know, God, uh, here we're, we're all freaking out and, and so feeling sorry for ourselves and fighting over, uh, you know, uh, you know, conservatives versus progressives, and we're going back and forth and all this shit, and you know, oh, so pissed off that we're confined in our home. It's like shit could be way worse. Yeah, it could be a lot worse. Uh, we as humans have been through way worse than what we're going through right now. So I think it starts with reframing that, like the fact that we have the technology that we have today that we could all literally be home, have our food delivered to us, stream our favorite movies and shows. And and a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people still have the capability to work from home and keep a job during this 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 time of crisis. So I think that this, the beginning of this is reframing your situation and not looking at it like this, this massive dark cloud because if you keep, if you think like that, that it's only going to get progressively worse as, as the weeks go on. So I think it starts with that. And then trying to do things like, uh, you know, I mentioned before the reading and mobility, like I, I, I like to find one or two things that I can improve. And this can be like personal growth, like uh, whether it be educating yourself on something, learning a new skill, uh, maybe a, a tackling like Justin's doing at his house, you know, projects that he's been meaning to get around to. So if you kind of focus your energy uh, and your mind on things that are going to improve your life and mm -hmm. other aspects that you can, can still can control right now, I think those people that figure that out are, are going to thrive during this time. Uh, versus those that are like the you know counting down the days the in, like the days are going to end. Yeah, I th you know you want to look at what it is about the current situation that is causing uh, most of your your mental or psychological anguish, right? So there's the the unknown factor and the fear. Um, the strongest, most based off of what I've read and researched. Okay, both from this the science of psychology. And from the spiritual practices, the popular spiritual practices, to tackle that, that's a, that's acceptance. Uh, if you are at odds with it, if you're fighting reality, then you're going to cause yourself a lot of problems. You accept the fact that you don't know what's going to happen. And you accept the fact that, okay, this is what's happening. Makes a huge difference. Okay. Besides that, though, the other part of the and, – and we're all starting to feel this now, and I think we all took this for granted – it's the lack of human contact. That's a big one, okay? Mm. It's considered a cruel and unusual punishment um, during war to isolate a soldier. If you, if you had a prisoner of war and you isolated him with no human contact, that's considered, uh, you know, according to the Geneva Convention, uh, torture. torture, yeah. okay? That's how much we need human connection. So here's what you can do. This is what I've been doing. I normally... Almost never FaceTime anybody mm -hmm. on my phone. Well, uh, since Always I've been now. oh, since I've been so on I. lockdown, mm -hmm. I FaceTime at least three people a day, if not four, five, or six people a day. I make it a point. Now, why is FaceTime uh, better than a phone call? Because you can see their face, mm -hmm. and that makes a huge difference in how you feel. You can connect differently. So, FaceTime people throughout the day. Here's the second thing you can do. Go for walks outside and actively try to engage in the people that you see walking outside. And I don't mean walk up to them, shake their hand, do the whole thing. Obviously, you want to stay, keep your distance. But every time you see somebody, this is what I've been doing. I, as, as I'm approaching them, I'm looking at them, waiting for eye contact. As soon as they look at me, I say, hey, how are you hanging in there? And you know, we say a few words and then that's it and we pass each other. Or somebody's in their driveway. Hey, how you doing? It's kind of crazy, right? Crazy times. Yes, it is. We'll have a th two minute conversation. I stay on the sidewalk. They're all the way in the in the driveway, mm -hmm. and then I walk away. I come home feeling so much better doing that, and it's and it's an active practice because you're not getting your normal, you know, uh, engagement with other people. You got to seek it out and make it a practice. And I promise you, that sounds silly. Makes it do it one day, one day. Facetime five people, have conversations with five people, yeah. go for a walk, and have and, tr and try and engage the people you pass. Try that one day and watch how you feel. 
Oh, I do that. Yeah. I, I'm always trying to get on FaceTime now. It's crazy how much more. So I'm on FaceTime these days and, and the kids as well, doing messenger and everything, talking to their friends. So important for them to maintain their relationships with their friends and everything too, by, you know, we actually have tackled this and this is something that, uh, and I'm glad this question was asked because uh, this kind of follows up too with the whole homeschool thing and like being away from their friends and then the stress that brings us to try and, you know, kind of create opportunities for them to be, you know, active and productive throughout the day without, you know, causing animosity and stress that, that, that trickles up to us. And so what we've done to, to really try and like solve some of this is, you know, like create a little bit more order. I'm not the most organized person in the world, but this is an opportunity for us uh, to tighten things up a bit and, and create and restore some sort of normalcy. And so what we've done is like highlight, you know, that this time in the morning is when we're all going to wake up. And so we've all kind of agreed to that. And, you know, and then like everybody sort of has like something they can do to contribute to the family. Like they'll, they'll take the dogs out, they'll, they'll feed them. Like we get up, like make breakfast, like we all get dressed, even though we don't have school. We don't have to drive to work at necessarily at that time. Everybody just wants to maintain uh, sort of this th this time period and this, this schedule that we used to have. And then the rest of the day, like we've highlighted certain act things that we're all going to do as a family and then times where they're going to separate and they're going to do whatever the hell they want. Um, and, you know, there's times for schoolwork in there and there's times for scheduling, you know, FaceTime with the friends. There's, you know, maybe we can walk by the grandparents' house, say hi, uh, and, and things like that. So we've, we've, we've done that and it, it has brought a little more, uh, you know, normalcy. happiness and normalcy to the family and lowered our, our anxiety, I think, uh, between us. Next question is from Justin 90. What do you guys think about 24 hour fitness, not freezing memberships? I didn't know these sons of bitches were doing this. Yeah, so I, so I looked it up. I, I looked into the details, oh, right? Is that man. true? Well, so people were complaining that 24 hour yeah, fitness shiesty. was making it impossible to cancel. So you'd have to call in to cancel your membership. Nobody's answering the phone. And then they shut the, the call line down. And the only way you could get in contact with anybody was apparently through their website. And yet nobody was getting in contact. So everybody's getting pissed off. And what 24 Hour Fitness put out a statement and said that, and this is based off this article that I, you know, that I, that I, I hope for their sake, I hope this isn't true because this is the type of person I am. I'm such, so they're, they're getting my membership dues just like the other three memberships that I'm paying right now. <laughs> I just haven't had the time to get around to freeze them. I didn't know they are doing it, but just because of that, and I know that that's probably fucking a lot of people. I'm the type of person that as soon as this is all cleared and gone, I will walk in, cancel that, and I'll never get a membership there Oh, again. because of the way they handle it. Yeah, just because yeah. of the way you handle well, it. So, so I hope for their sake this ain't true. So here's what the CEO said in an email to uh, members. It says, please be assured that your membership will be extended for the same, peri same period that our clubs will be temporarily closed. So rather than freezing their, their dues, it out. like every other gym does, yeah. you know, LA fitness did that gold gym did that rather than free. They're still, make any sense. they're still billing people. Yeah. And then if, if the gyms were closed for a month, when they come back, they'll extend them a month. I think that's a terrible, that's not the way to well, go. Well, it doesn't, you can't do that to people that are month to month. Yeah. If yeah. you're a month to month membership, you should be able to cancel the fuck you want. You're, right. You're still creating a financial hardship for people that don't have a job right now. Yeah, dude. This is bad. I mean, if you were a gym, how would you handle this? Because also, you want to imagine you're here, you are, you're a gym company. Maybe they're not financially very liquid. And so they're like, oh shit, we can't freeze. We need mm. this cash to come well, in. Well, they fall in the they fall in the category of the, the retailers. Like I said, it was in, they probably only have 19 days worth of cash backed up. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, they also will fall in the category of being able to get loans that will probably be forgiven in the future for to keep your paying your employees and doing things like that. So I would hope that that would happen. Like, I don't know that that really that pisses me off to even hear something like yeah, that because that scarcity mindset is rough. I'm such a principal with. guy, yeah. and I'll as much as I like having the luxury of having a 24 hour fitness membership because I know that they're everywhere, and if there's that that few times a year yeah. where I need one, I use it. Um, I'm also the type of person out of principle because they did something like that that I'll I'll cut them off. Yeah, and I, I appreciate the businesses that take a lump and they come back stronger. You know, like I feel like, you know, like opportunity for this is like you can shine in this or you can not. And you can like try and like hold whatever money you have, like still coming in, even though you're like everybody else is like hurting right now. It's like, you know, like I, I have no empathy for him because yeah, part, of, part of why I left the company was and what, how we all got together was they weren't evolving. 
I felt like fitness had been, uh, for the most part, they they were part of the the stagnant part of the industry, the old model. And, you know, they really weren't reinventing themselves and thinking of the future. We knew that, you know, digital media and streaming was the future of how fitness was done. And 24 Hour Fitness was late to the party. Mm -hmm. And considering they're a billion dollar company, they should have been one of the first. And back in Mark Mastroff days, they were always the first. Mm -hmm. They were the they, they were, were the innovators. They, exactly. They were they were setting the bar. They were constantly uh, creating and doing what was new and cutting edge. And man, once they once they sold and he was out of that company, it was never the same. And so I, I have no empathy for what they're going through right now whatsoever. Well, I have empathy for the people that work there yeah. and the trainers that are probably handcuffed right now because they have policies oh, absolutely. like they have policies that say you can't moonlight. You mm -hmm. can't be a trainer for them. They'll and, fire you if they Right. Fire. So I don't know, have no idea what they're do they did they lift that ban right now? Are they telling trainers go ahead and virtually train clients because we can't pay you anymore? Like what are they I have no idea what they're doing right now, but the people that I feel the most sorry for are the people that are employed there that are probably not getting paychecks anymore because most of them are well, hour, hourly employees. I think mm -hmm. right now one of the most important things that a company can do is uh, is, is pay attention to how they're going to be viewed by the public when this is all said and done. Mm -hmm. So rather than just looking at the numbers and saying, okay, we can't afford to freeze uh, memberships, we're just going to extend it after when they come back. Because we're in an era of social media and fast communication, uh, now the word gets out, right? The word gets out that you guys are doing this and you guys look like assholes. When it's all said and done, that's going to look terrible on you and it'll probably hurt you more than had you done the, you know, the, the principal thing and sent out an email and said, hey guys, look, this is probably going to hurt us really bad, but obviously we're closed. We're automatically freezing all memberships. You probably would end up in the long term uh, better off rather than this strategy and shutting everything down and not responding to anybody because that was a big complaint yeah. is that people couldn't yeah, even shysty they couldn't even talk to anybody no. to cancel their membership which is uh you know that's a little that's not the best uh, not the best strategy and I, and I recommend this for any business if you're suffering right now I think if you're honest to your customers tell them what's going on I'm, I'm not saying it'll save you. But you're going to be remembered for how you handled the situation more, uh, the, you know, a lot. That's how you're going to be remembered. You're going to be remembered how you handled the situation. So think of it that way. Like, how am I going to be remembered? How is my company going to be? How are these people going to remember us when all was said and done? Are we going to be remembered as greedy or as unfair? Or are we going to be remembered as that one company that, you know, did the right thing for its customers? Because that, I think, is going to go... A long way when when all of this is you know said and done. I agree. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.